Hey, and welcome back to the build a basement today. We're going to take a close look at the Revo micro. I want to make sure it was a Revo mini. Make sure it's micro. Yeah. So uh, Revo micro E3D's new hot end, uh, part of their revolutionary, um, what do they call it? Revolutionary rapid change system. Uh, and when they get into that, they're talking about the rapid change of the nozzles on these units. Um, it's not all that much quicker, uh, and I don't change my nozzles all that often. So why don't we go into talking a little bit more about some of the other benefits that this offers. So here is our Revo Micro boxed up uh, again from E3D. I did get mine from KB3D. So if you're looking for one, I do suggest them as a good source, uh, assuming they have them in stock. So good luck with that. Uh, they do have a good contact list and um, if you do reach out to chris over there at uh, kb3d uh, he'll help you out the best he can so uh, what is in the box well the revo micro is in the box along with the revo micro in this particular box uh, we also have the additional tips on here the additional nozzles so let's take a look at one of these nozzles real quick <clears throat> so this is what makes it special special in a good way. So you have your nozzle and your nozzle is integrated with your bimetallic heat break, which goes into your copper portion of your heat break, which is all material fitted together without any matching points uh, when you install this. So pretty much what that means is once you have one of these installed on your printer, um, you have no failure point or no um, stoppage point for your filament once it goes in there. Um, so if your filament goes in through the top, there's very little chance that anything's going to catch on it when it comes out the bottom. Now on this particular unit, this is the micro again. Um, what you have is an M12 mutt, nut, mutt, M12 nut on the top. You have an integrated um, thermistor and heater core. Uh, that is a ceramic unit that goes right around the base here. Uh, one of the benefits being, since it is surrounding the base, is a quicker heat up time. Um, not that heat up times are long, but uh, you have a 40 watt unit in here. Um, trying to remember specs here, but you have, I believe, a 100 millimeter lead on your thermistor and 120 on your uh, heat core. Um, the fan is removable comes right off if you don't need it I won't be using it this is actually going into my Voron 0.1 I'm building um, you can get thread up like that and in the end here I'll show you what the uh, S or what the um, modified part is that that will go into so one of the things I wanted to do and I'm gonna leave the fan off for this I'm gonna leave everything else the way it is is I wanted to look at weight so one of the benefits of going with the Revo is weight so here i have a couple of oddball units i have the fetus dragonfly which is part of the bill of materials for the boron zero i have the revo i have a v6 it's actually a v6 clone but close enough i have a standard unit off of an ender printer just for comparison um, I do have a mosquito and I do have, uh, what else do I have? Where is my dragon? Hold on real quick. I'm gonna find a dragon. All right, for good measure, I went and grabbed the dragon. So again, we have our Revo, we have a dragonfly, we have a V6, we have an Ender 3, 
and we have a dragon high flow and we are going to see what the weight differences are now just to let you know the lower the weight of your heater core or your um, your, your hot end uh, the less mass that you have when you're printing which means the quicker you can make those corners the more precise those movements can be pretty important so let's start off with the Revo So the Revo documentation states that it is about 30 grams, and I have it here at 29, so pretty good, on point. Let's compare that to the build materials hot end, Whoops. which is the Dragonfly, but this does not have a heater core in it. We're at 46, and just because it's what I have handy, here is a 50 watt heater core. That brings us up to 70. I'm not going to put a thermistor on there. Thermistors are pretty light. Um, plus, like I said, the 50 watt versus the 40 watt that's on the Revo. So we're at 70 grams. So right now we're looking at roughly 40 grams more uh, or more than double the actual weight. Of course, that's weight that's moving on your, your um, tool head when you're printing. So that's quite a bit. All right, let's compare that to a standard V6. Okay, 35, and again, we'll add that. We're at 58. Um, no thermistor on there again. But yeah, thermistor in there, you're probably close to 60. So about double on that one. Um, and just because I just noticed, I don't have a nozzle on there. Another gram or so. Let's look at the Dragon. And again, I don't have a nozzle on it, but Let's put it on there anyways. Dragon high flow. I've got 50, 51 grams. You throw a nozzle on there. You got another gram on there. You got 52. So roughly 22 grams. Not quite double, but quite a bit. And here's the lights of the bunch. And light, not necessarily in a good way. Um, this is the Ender hot end. Standard Ender hot end. And 29. So. What we have is a precision hot end from E3D with a newly designed thermistor and heater core that wraps itself right around uh, the, the nozzle along with a quick change system that allows you to pull out that nozzle without the fear of uh, you know under tightening and having ooze come out of there uh, for the same weight as a cheap, not so great Ender unit. Pretty decent. So let's take a look real quick at the specifications from E3D. Uh, the unit I have is a micro, is also a Revo 6, which drops in pretty much to the same housings or the same mounts that you have currently for a V6. And then you got the Himera with the built in drive on there, the extruder. So look at the micro real quick here first. Um, Pricing in the U.S. is about $95 for the Micro as well as the V6 version. Uh, the Himera version is a little bit more money. I believe it's around $160, maybe $170. And here is the build. This is kind of what I wanted to show you. Um, so you have, uh, you, you know, your, your feed here with a, with a retainer. You have your M12 nut, your M12 thread here on your heat sink. Uh, you have a spring, and the spring's sole job is to hold the heat sink to the heater core when the nozzle isn't in place, um, and also provide spacing uh, to keep that heater core down onto the nozzle since it's not threading into the heater core. Um, then you have the heater core with basically a stress support here for your wiring to lessen the chances of this breaking. And the interesting thing about that stretch relief is I believe when beta versions of this came out, that was not on there. So they actually were active in participating with their uh, beta testers to come up with fixes and um, quickly fix things before they launched this full up. So kudos to E3D for that. And then you have your nozzles. Uh, so right here, your nozzle with the integrated um, heat break on there. And again, that's a bimetal. Uh, by a metallic unit you know you have your brass down here you have your stainless steel uh, thin wall and then you have brass up here with your thread which goes into your heat break 
And then you have one last piece of silicone right here. All right, so that right there is your micro. All right. So your six is going to look very much the same. Again, $95. Uh, your bottom components are all the same going up. Only thing that changes up here is your mounting point, which is your six heat sink. Uh, so if you call it everything else here, it does come with a different fan and shroud. Um, again, these are removable. They just clamp on. You don't have to use them, uh, but they are available. They come on all of them. Um, so no major differences here. But I do want to look at the Homera real quick, uh, which is more money, but does include the extruder on there. So you're getting the same base components down at the bottom again. You're getting the extruder with gearing as well as idler, I should say, uh, in drive. And then you also have your Himera heatsink, which is pretty special uh, in the way that that uh, forms its function. It's completely different than any others. And it also comes with a fan. In this particular case, you're probably going to use the heatsink and fan. It comes with the unit. Uh, again, it's a little bit more money. You're looking at about $160 on, $160 on that. So benefits. So aside from the weight that you're saving on that unit, uh, versus some of the other popular units you can get out there. Um, you also have the quick change, which we mentioned multiple times at this point. Um, you're getting the uh, opportunity to have a unit um, with an integrated heat break so that if something does go wrong, if something does break, switching out that nozzle switches out everything. So you can make quick repairs to that unit. The one major downside that I have in E3D, if you're listening, this is directly to you, is nozzle choices. At this time, um, March 1st, 2022, there are no hardened nozzles available for this unit. Not a huge deal if you just print with normal plastics, but if you print anything with carbon fiber, uh, anything with, um, I don't know, some stone, or even anything that uh, is glow in the dark, uh, that will probably eat through that uh, brass nozzle relatively quickly. So E3D, um, that's probably the next thing I would like to see you come out with is hardened nozzles available for this. The reason that's important is this is a patented product. The bottom section of this unit is 100% patent, <clears throat> excuse me, patented, whereas the top section, the uh, above the heat break, basically your cooling section, uh, is not patented. That is available open source so people can make additional mounts and um, cooling solutions for that. So all in all, it looks like a great unit. So. I wanted to mention, and I mentioned it before, uh, your standard BOM. This is your standard BOM build for the Voron Zero. And I said I mentioned this in the beginning. Um, this is what you're going to want printing. And this right here is the unit for the, the Revo Micro. Now, there's one loss. You do lose a few millimeters in your print height, your maximum print height. So you're going to wind up going from let's see here, 80, 87. So you're going to lose roughly eight millimeters of print height, which is not huge. Uh, I don't print a lot of tall prints. Other than that, that's your only loss. The way this works, and I will link to the STL file down below, and hopefully you subscribe um, while you're down there is the nut that comes with this the m12 nut simply comes off it gets inserted into the slot it's a little tight it's meant to be and oh, then you simply screw this unit in And trust me when I say, it's one of those things that's easier to do when you're not trying to do it on camera. Come on. It's still right down there far enough. There we go.
And because that spring is the only thing that's holding the heat core and thermistor on there, that spins relatively freely down there. So there you go. That is on there. Back to here. That is on there, just like that. Your wires will get routed up wherever you need them to go. Is your finished product. Is your micro inside of a mini afterburner. So, thumbs up to E3D on this one. It looks like an awesome hot end. I know there's other videos out there about this particular hot end, but I just want to give my quick uh, two cents on it. And uh, if you do like this video, if you do like this type of content, do subscribe, give me a thumbs up, like this video, and um, check out the links below. You might find some interesting stuff. See you next time.